Hello out there. Hello out there on YouTube. Well, um, these two days have swept by already. Uh, and so I'm here to send you, on, send you on your way with some kind of technological blessing. But not for a few minutes yet, because there are thanks to be made and a few kind words to recall from across the vent. And I've been asked to offer a summary idea or two myself from this podium. Um, since this too will be over quickly, uh, you might take a moment to catch your breath and remember the conference and to let our larger audience on uh, YouTube bring this window to the front. Uh, it's been two days of insights, innovations, wit, wonder, humility, ethics, and very little PowerPoint poisoning. Uh, for all this abundance, we have several people to thank. First of all, you, kind listeners, um, for, and this is just for you in the room, not on YouTube, your undivided, prolonged attention. That's a feat in itself these days. Um, then to the speakers, each of you, uh, for your generosity uh, in participating. Um, by now, you're uh, too numerous uh, for me to reprise some key point from each of your talks. That's what YouTube is for. Thanks to the staff who made this all work, way more than it usually does, I mean elsewhere. And thanks to one member of the staff in particular, where are you, Denise, for your magic. Thanks to faculty, esteemed colleagues, for listening in, and especially to those who took part, uh, and to those who, like me, were asked up onto this stage. And thanks to Monica, Shining Dean, to whom it never occurred that all this was impossible. You're two days into, further into the future now, and what's it like? Two days ago seems far in the past, and out, out there on YouTube, or if there's anybody in the back row crazed by Twitter, uh, two hours ago might seem like ancient history. For things are indeed um, moving quickly. In fact, probably while we were sitting here in this auditorium, somebody has adapted a technology to accomplish something new in the world. And in the couple months that we were planning this, most recently, somebody somewhere has built an applied technology that was worth including that we should have had here. And in the last couple of years, well, there's a tweet going around from Google CEO Eric Schmidt that it now only takes two or three years for humanity to produce as much information as existed at all before 2003. Take caution, however, that knowledge accumulates more slowly and indeed sometimes goes extinct. In fact, it's really not looking too good for the ratio of knowledge um, to information. But you don't meet too many people saying how much better life was before all those damn search engines. Meanwhile, it's only been really a little more than a decade since Google burst onto the scene. You uh, real-time social media addicts might zoom out to that. And it's just three decades since the personal computer rolled in, three decades of businesses crunching numbers with ever less concern for what those numbers represent. Five decades gets you zoomed back to the Jetsons and to modern architecture and to the heyday of Detroit. Full century reveals perhaps one of the most transformative and essential technologies of all, electrification. Try telling people that electrification is recent. I mean, relative to architecture uh, and humanity and, and to civilization. Note how electricity uh, permeated everything invisibly, like pervasive computing now. And by now, you do know that uh, computing need not involve a keyboard and a mouse and a screen. Uh, to continue the parable, electricity gave us the assembly line, cinema, air conditioning, and unforgettable reflections of neon in the rain. 200 years, that gets you back to power technology of any sort steam in particular, which remade the means of production. 
this conference began with remarks on the Industrial Revolution. 500 years gets you that core technology of universities, well, until just now, print. A thousand years, and you're looking at the source of many of the craft production technologies that are so uh, near and dear to uh, those of us who value uh, knowing through making, uh, many of those in China. 2,000 years is the approximate age of the Pont du Gard outside Nîmes in France. The, French, the Romans, you know, got it right with infrastructure. And their notions of urbanism may still dominate today. 5,000 years, and this is really round numbers here, uh, dates the oldest archaeological remains and architecture and urbanism of any sort. A field, to a field this ancient and enduring, modernity really does start to look like a flash in the pan. But it's 10,000 years that gets you into Jared Diamond territory and perhaps the earliest instances of that ever controversial technology, genetic modification of food, uh, which while reeling ahead at dangerous speeds these days, did occur back then too in deep, slow motion through selective breeding and domestication. By 20,000, it goes blank. I don't know, maybe there were some ice ages or something. Uh, 10 seems like the outer limit unless you're a paleontologist. Okay, so that's how far, um, 10,000 years, that's how far uh, at least some technologists are looking ahead. The clock of the long now, uh, which you may know, and which was declared back for the occasion of the millennium, is a quest to build and operate a device to keep time for 10,000 years. Never mind whether this comes with reboot instructions for civilization. For as its lead creators, Danny Hillis, Brian Anino, and uh, Stuart Brand explained, the, the main function might just be to get more people thinking about futures longer than next quarter. For alas, so much technology seeks ever um, to shorten the now. And for this, Facebook and Twitter have been quite profound achievements. Design likes its now short, too. Always wanting to express the zeitgeist and to stay at least a few months, well, except to make that minutes now on the net, avant of the guard. And so as Ashley Schaefer so eloquently explained, design gets especially short-sighted wherever it tries to represent and give appearance to the future of technology. Anyway, uh, as on so many topics, uh, that sage of Yankee Stadium got it right, as only Yogi Berra could have put it, um, predicting is difficult, especially the future. I'll settle for just recognizing the future myself and avoid the use of the future tense. Uh, Long-term futures are toughest of all. You could get on to, uh, go Google on to uh, longbets.org, where Warren Buffett's got a million dollar stake uh, and uh, there's lots of Kevin Kelly bets there, there if you follow him. Uh, Kevin predicts that 30 years from now, uh, sorry, 30 years will pass before the planet's population starts sharply declining. At least a couple people on there predict that the Large Hadron Collider will serve up the biggest, most instantaneously, most utterly final now of them all. Um, Thank goodness this wasn't a conference about all that. Or else you would have had to sit through talks and forecasts of transhumanism where you get to um, offload yourself onto a new body. There might have been forecasts of technologies to succeed carbon-based life as the planet's sentient beings. There is something coming after us in both senses of that sentence. And of course, the singularity is near. Uber futurist Ray Kurzweil could have Skyped in to tell us. But you know, just on stuff to build, there could have been a conference about futures of nanofabbing with an instantiator in every corner. And yes, there will still be corners. As we've been reminded this weekend, the future is somehow never sufficiently round. Black Elk warmed us, you know. A and electrification? Uh, 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 how about a future of cheap, printable, photovoltaics covering half the Sahara. And not last but not least, 
a future global net of enlightened hyperlocal governance to make it all happen. Some conference that would have been, huh? And you know, then uh, there are those dark green futures conferences on peak everything and transition towns. There, the future looks like subsistence agriculture, barter where possible, and a rifle by the door. And of course, there are conferences on uh, technology of design information delivery futures. But would you have come to a two-day event on BIM? Oh, anyway, so with, you know, with all those kinds of alternatives out there, I, I'm really glad for this conference. I, 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 uh, I, I think that we really found the right zone. Um, and I think this has been, because it's been about humane applications, uh, less about novelties in form, and it's, of course, been about public education. In fact, that's going on right now. I think it's been great theoretically uh, and savvy without problematizing theory of the sort that has a capital T. And I think it kept moving. So without further ado, let's, let's take one more breath here uh, to mark one last stage. And let me at least uh, recite a couple dozen remarks, one, one line each. This won't take long that I've heard. In the future, there's a potential for redefinition of craft. In the future, nothing dates more quickly than projections of the future. In the future, it's not possible in plaster of Paris. In the future of universal authorship, all space will be public space. In the future, what is the technology of whispering? In the future, there will be millions of data points per day on your work. In the future, it will be transforming the effects of materiality. In the future, architecture will still have weight. In the future, all materials become exceptions to the rule. In the future, design, research, and education are global, and all stakeholders are local. In the future, you'd be amazed by a talking dog at least until you realized what it was saying. In the future, it's all wrapped up in a cloud of metadata. In the future, the groundswell for design comes from people going broke. In the future, it all goes up and to the right. In the future, certain advances in technology can decrease knowledge. In the future, our ability to see at a different scale changes what we work on. In the future, design technology recedes into the background. In the future, people pretend to be computers. In the future, there will be 17 words for all the things we now call tools. I made that one up, sorry. In the future, the grotesque and horrific will become useful tools. In the future, social configurations could drive new work. In the future, sensitivities increase, and so does the control of material energies. And in the future, buildings educate publics and depend on technologies to do so. Anyway, one last one, out of order, that came from Eric Shepard, and that leads, I think, to our next event, uh, which is the future of history. Eric said that if you want to think differently about the future, that often uh, forces you to think differently about the past. The, the past is, is going to be different. And the future isn't what it used to be. And thank you, Bruce Sterling, for all that this morning. You made my day. Anyway, in parting, um, I hope you can uh, use technology to um, expand uh, the time to which you feel that you belong. You know? So thanks. Bye. Have a, have a nice trip home. Uh, you can close that window now. 
um, this uh, event on the uh, future of technology, this very enjoyable conference, is now ended. Good afternoon. <laughs>